Let's talk about the kids. One of the things that I'm most concerned about right now is the children that have been living almost a calendar year without seeing people's faces, without seeing facial expressions. Uh, the only faces they might see are on television and in their own household, right? Um, so when we're out interacting in the world, these kids aren't learning social cueing, you know what I mean? They're not learning um, really even what a smile is. They're not learning these little subtleties that we convey with our humanity, with our, with our face and with our expression. This is disturbing. Uh, one of the big markings of autistic children is that they don't register expression. They don't really understand expression in others. They don't understand emotion and register that in others. So I ask you, are we raising and training an entire generation of autistic kids? Now, not only that, what we've done is we've taken these healthy children, perfectly healthy children, and separated them all from each other. So little Johnny and little Susie can't play chase on the playground anymore. Oh yeah, because they're not even at school, because they're all at home in their apartments with a uh, government employee as the teacher with a video monitor in their bedrooms or living rooms. Um, whole nother subject, by the way, I have, I have some relatives that are teachers. Uh, elementary school and junior high teachers. And they're pretty concerned about all this as well. But the interesting thing is they're not even so much teaching anymore. The computers are teaching the kids with formulaic uh, lesson plans. And then the computer's just grading whether or not the kids' uh, answers perfectly match their formula, right? And the teacher's job is now the monitor. The teacher's job is now the overseer to like watch the camera and make sure that Johnny and Susie are, are there and paying attention, you know, and not like looking away or doing anything else. So it's so strange that the, the teachers have now become the overseers and that their job is to just remotely monitor all these kids and make sure that they're sitting around in their houses um, watching the computer mandated lesson okay but let's talk about this contact thing right like so here we have healthy children perfectly healthy children that are now told that all of their other friends are potentially dangerous all of your friends are potentially dangerous and they're going to maybe harm you and they're going to maybe harm grandma now that's pretty psychologically damaging that's psychologically fucked, okay? Completely psychologically damaging to think that the world is that kind of a dangerous place, right? Now, on a worse level, I think, is this way of convincing individuals, even well-meaning, healthy individuals, that they pose a danger to others. Uh, little Billy, you, I know you feel healthy. I know everything looks fine. I know you have zero symptoms whatsoever, but Billy, you could potentially be carrying an invisible boogeyman and healthy little Billy, you could get sick people even sicker without even knowing it. You could hurt everybody. You could kill your grandma. Don't you don't want to kill your grandma, Billy? That, that is a real psychological mindfuck. That is uh, really messed up. To think that we pose so much of a danger that we wouldn't even know it. That we could be like trying to be really good in the world and could still like harm others. So there is something that we need to realize is the, the truth of that matter is that we all take calculated risks every single day, right? Uh, far more people die in car accidents than they could even drum up numbers for this Convid 1984, okay? And we all take educated risk assessment every day before we go out into the road and drive, right? Because every single one of us, even well-meaning, even well-meaning, like I'm a really good conscious driver, two hands on the wheel, I don't like fart around and do a bunch of other stuff, right? Potentially, I pose the risk of harming somebody else when I go out on the road. Uh, there could be an equipment malfunction, there could be some surprise road conditions, like a, a deer could jump out and if I swerve, I could potentially hit somebody else, right? 
I could also be hurt when I go out in the world in a car. Every single time I do that, I know there's a possibility of me getting hurt or even of me hurting somebody else, even as well-meaning as I am. Now, we all decide to take this collective risk assessment and decide that chances are pretty good that that's not going to happen today, and uh, we're going to go out anyway, right? So this is something that we have to employ throughout our whole lives, especially as adults, we have to decide risk assessment. Um, I want to go skydiving. There's a potential risk involved with that. What's the payoff? What's the risk? Is it worth it for me? Am I going to engage in that behavior? Now, we're teaching these kids that they don't have that capacity. They do not have the capacity of risk assessment. Uh, it's very quite simply laid out. Is like if somebody else says, this is unsafe, don't do it. They cannot do it. They can't even comprehend or think of doing it. Um, so what I'm scared of, man, I'm scared that this whole next generation, they're already calling the lost generation because they've had their whole thing stolen from them, right? I'm concerned that they're not going to have these critical thinking skills, um, personal risk assessment in the world, that they're not even going to know how to take responsibility for themselves. And they're going to be really weak. They're going to be weak-minded. They're not going to understand how to interact with other people in a healthy way. Um, the areas where they did interact where, you know, the schooling, I think the primary reason of even going to public school at all is the social dynamic. It's the aspect of learning about peer groups and um, how to negotiate uh, all kinds of different people, right? All kinds of different people in one setting. How do we get along with them? How do we negotiate? How do we make friends? Um, how do we alleviate stress as a group, right? Healthfully. All of these things are getting lost because they're all put in little teeny boxes. And if these kids aren't already with a screen in their face for enough time every single day, now their entire schooling is also sitting in a chair staring at a screen? This isn't good. This isn't good. And now they're told that any uh, close physical contact or even like standing within six feet of somebody is dangerous. Even though you're both healthy. Like Billy, Susie, you guys are fine. Hug it out. Go, go play tag. Go chase each other and play grab ass. Whatever you're going to do. It's very upsetting. It's very, very upsetting. Are we weakening our next generation? Yep. Yes. Oh, boy. My daughter, for example, one of these, my younger daughter, she's uh, 14 now. Her volleyball season this year, they couldn't actually play games. The volleyball season, and she was one of the lucky ones that even got to go to school. She, she actually got to go to in-person school with all the weird distancing and all this weird stuff, you know. Um, quick disclaimer, if her schooling was my full jurisdiction, that wouldn't be the case. Uh, she'd be unschooled, homeschooled, and the like. But since I don't have uh, jurisdiction over her schooling, she's there, right? The only reason she even likes going there is because she gets to be in person. She gets to see her friends, right? Well, they break the kids up into little teeny isolated groups. So, like, her bestie is in another class that they never get to see. They, like, keep the kids separate in their little, like, isolated units. And then they have, like, mandated uh, PE activities or even recess activities. Like, it's like, oh... Uh, it's time to go outside of our large uh, enclosed building where we all just walk around spaced six feet apart from each other one or two times around this thing and then come back inside. Sounds like a prison. Sounds a bit like a prison. Recesses, or recesses have been taken away. Lunches have been taken away. Um, any kind of like uh, passing period where the kids would have actually got to interact and like talk to each other really quickly, you know, pass a note, crack a joke, all of these things that schooling is about have been stripped, completely stripped. So her volleyball, right? Her volleyball, all they could do was like practice bumping the ball back and forth to each other because they could be six feet apart. But any kind of actual drill that these kids might have like bumped shoulders with their buddy, no go. They couldn't even play like a scrimmage game until the very last day that they somehow scrapped together enough people and like enforced social distancing during the little scrimmage game. What are we doing? What are we doing? We have kids out there that are athletes. There are kids out there that their entire life has been de dedicated to baseball or football or soccer or 
softball or like tennis or track and field, like you name it. There are people all the way from young junior high up to the collegiate level that their whole life is, is here, is like wrapped up in this physical activity and this training and the dedication and all this stuff. And to have all of that just completely wiped out, completely wiped out. What are we doing? These healthy kids, you know? I, I meet kids around and I talk to people. I went to the uh, feed store and this farm boy that's loading up the feed in my truck, he, um, as soon as no one was looking, there's a whole story that led up to this, but you know, skip that part. Uh, this young guy, he's looking around and he's like, hey, because he sees that we don't wear masks. We don't do that bullshit. We don't wear the ritualistic shame muzzle. We don't wear a face diaper in my family. We don't do it. So he's looking around and he's like, hey man, do you mind if I pull this thing down? I can't even breathe in this thing. And I'm like, buddy, absolutely. You are not gonna get me sick and I'm not gonna get you sick. We're both fine. Breathe freely, my friend. And he's like, oh, thank God. And he pulls this thing down and he's like, you know, they even make us wear this thing in football practice. Fucking football practice? You're, you're putting individuals into a sport that literally has the potential of concussion, physical injury, broken bones, and death with like colliding each other's heads together. And then somehow you're gonna keep them all safe by like making them breathe their own CO2 and not even get oxygen while they're exercising. Insane. It is insanity. Insanity. So if you're a parent out there, let's do what we can to not ruin the next generation of children and make them weak, shitty, sniveling, scared, little, autistic babies. Sorry to be so blunt. That's what we're setting up. We are setting up a future of a world with no oomph, with no drive, with nothing in them, no spirit to fight back, uh, no spirit to question, and no trust in their own individual knowledge, sovereignty, bodies, minds, ideas, none. Whew. They're trying to eradicate free thought, free speech, and doing anything they can to keep, to keep everybody just far enough apart that you can't really exchange ideas and you can't really like, you know, convey things. Imagine everything I've said in this video, sharing my heart right here. What if I was like this the whole time? If I was like this the whole time, look at this. This looks like a zombie. This is a freaking drone, man. This is a drone. Let's teach our kids about love. Let's teach our kids to be fearless. Let's teach our kids to stand up. Let's teach our kids to breathe. Let's teach our kids that their very existence is not a threat to anybody. They have a right to breathe, to sing, to dance, to run, to play, to tackle and wrestle and like, and play fucking football without recycling their own breath. I'm worried, man. I'm concerned about these kids. I'm concerned about the future. But it's up to us to do something about it, right? So in my family, we talk about all this stuff all the time. And we learn together a lot. I learn a lot from those kids, from their perspective. So listen to your kids, man. Learn from them. And maybe you got to take a step back and wonder, uh, what's the risk assessment? What's the risk assessment that your healthy child is magically going to get, like, somebody else sick without even showing symptoms? And, like, what kind of complacency are we teaching them? Are we teaching them like absolute herd mentality or are we teaching them to think for themselves, even if it's a bit uncomfortable, you know? Oh man, this one's a doozy, this one's a doozy. Hug those babies, get out there, hug your children, <laughs> hug your kids tight because they need some physical contact, okay? The, uh, the world is trying to strip them from physical contact because you know what? When we're within six feet of each other, you know what we share? Our electromagnetic heart field. The actual ele electromagnetic resonance of our hearts is shared within six feet. So break those barriers, man. Break those barriers. 
there's a lot more we could talk about this, but um, I'm telling you, this world is no more dangerous from little teeny microscopic invisible things that people think are invading their bodies, right? It's no more dangerous than it was last year or the year before or the year before that. Let me ask you this. If, if you are going out into the world and wearing a mask right now because of this uh, Convid 1984, did you wear a mask for bird flu? Did you wear a mask for swine flu? Did you wear a mask for H1N1? Did you wear a mask for SARS or MERS? Did you wear a mask for tuberculosis that every single year kills about 1.5 million people every year? Have you ever worn a mask for tuberculosis? Ever? No? Then maybe you don't need one for this hocus pocus. Keep thinking guys, love those babies.